Good afternoon. Today we're going to be looking at how to utilize an oscilloscope to help intonate and tune a guitar. The oscilloscope software that you can see on the screen is called Soundcard Oscilloscope. You can Google it through Soundcard Scope and it's based out of Germany, Zenitz, and we really appreciate the work that they've put into this as a free download for educational use. If you're going to use it commercially there is a licensing fee but for schools there is no licensing fee. So this is going to help us in setting up the frequencies and ensuring that the string length for intonation is exactly the same length or within a couple of Hertz. So first we're going to go through is the setup process of this sound card oscilloscope. This happens to be the brand new version but this setup process will work on all versions of this scope for our needs. And I have to give credit to Ethan Kern of our Sinclair Community College Guitar Lab for coming up with this new process to save us time and effort in setting up the intonation process. We had a uh, longer process before, but today we're going to show you the brand new uh, fast and easy uh, intonation process. So the first thing we have to do is go under settings and make sure that we have the right inputs for the guitar. Now the first thing you want to do, and I always do this, is I open up the input window and the input window will show you the uh, items that are live. And So I've got the line in with the guitar and obviously I'm running a microphone uh, to talk to you. And so I've got two different inputs into my computer system that are being recorded right now. So the line in is the one that we're going to use for the sound card scope. If your guitar is not getting picked up by the sound card scope, make sure that you plug in the guitar before you start the sound card oscilloscope software. Uh, that's one of the little tips that we discovered is that sometimes if your computer does not recognize the input, preferred line in as opposed to microphone input. Uh, line in will give you a better dynamic range than the microphone input, so utilize your line input. We're going to start off by looking at the sound card scope itself once we've got the settings. And how do you know if it's working? Well, two things. Number one, uh, you can pluck the guitar string and you can see that the trigger light here lights up and that indicates that there is sound coming to the sound card oscilloscope uh, that it's being registered. So first we're going to have to set up the scope itself. I'm going to go ahead and close the the sound uh, recording window here, but that allows you to set up recording levels and so for example my line in I can set the properties and I can set the level very high or very low based on uh, the guitar levels and I can listen to it and, and so forth but right now I've set it to about 85 as an input level and it seems to work pretty well. We'll close this out and we'll go on to the next step. So the next step is to take a look at the frequency tab and originally this is how we previously set up all of our um, guitars except it was pretty painful of having to deal with the cutoff frequencies. But it's still kind of cool to see the harmonics. So we're going to zoom in all the way. I'm going to go ahead and move to the left hand side. And when I pluck the string, you'll see the harmonics of the guitar. And so this is auto scaling. I can peak hold it. We can also do dB as opposed to frequency, but we want frequency in Hertz. And right now the frequency is still a little bit high. We actually want to be closer to, to 300 because we're going to have a range in the 50 to 80. And if it's auto scaling, it's going to keep moving. But you can see here where the harmonics are on this low E string. So this is the base E string. And so we have a setting somewhere in the 60 to 70 range and then it doubles and then it doubles and then it doubles and it doubles and those are all the harmonics of that particular string that you see. So it's an interesting uh, way to take a look at your guitar string and you can see that it's still vibrating so we're still getting harmonics off of that vibration.
So what we're going to do is filter this in a separate window. So we're going to go ahead and pop that frequency filter window out. Let me bring it back in the view. And we're going to have to do bandpass. Um, there is the option of bandpass, and we're not going to sync it. So we're going to actually have two different bandpasses, channel 1 and channel 2. And this is one of the new discoveries that Ethan Kern came up with at the Sinclair Community College Guitar Lab, was that if we use both bandpasses, channel 1 and channel 2, we can set up the harmonics that we need to do for that intonation process. So we're going to do the low E string. Uh, just because we've got it kind of set up that way right now. So we're going to set the initial cutoff bass frequency at 50. The upper cutoff is going to be 100. And then I'm going to set the second cutoff frequency that's doubled. The bass, or excuse me, the bottom frequency cutoff is going to be at 100. And we'll set this to 200. And so the idea is that somewhere between 50 and 100 is going to be the frequency, and you can see that it's actually still vibrating here in the system um, with the core frequency. And right now it's set to about 64, 65 hertz. So that's where it's currently set. Now what happens if it's outside of this range? Well, if I detune the guitar and it goes outside of that range, it won't pick it up. It'll pick up some very odd number or it'll just keep bouncing around and we won't be able to see it. So the best way to do it is tune the guitar so it's somewhat close. The key thing to remember about intonation is that it does not have to be at the playable frequency. The playable frequency on the low E string is 82.4 Hertz. It doesn't have to be there. I can set it at 65 Hertz and double that number and I can get the intonation. It's all about doubling the frequency value for intonation. It makes no difference what frequency you set as the bass frequency. It just has to be doubled. But here's the other thing that Ethan discovered, is that if we get away from the frequency tab, because we set up the frequency bandpass filter, we go back to the oscilloscope tab. Down here on the bottom, it says channel mode, and we do channel 1 plus channel 2. And we go hertz and volts and under hertz and volts there is an option for frequency to show up on the oscilloscope. So now instead of getting the harmonic uh, component we actually see the values show up as the bass frequency and the harmonic frequency in red. That's channel 2. So channel 1 remember we band pass that 50 to 100. Channel 2 we band pass that from 100 to 200. So low E, I'm going to open, open uh, tune, we're at 65.4, 65.5, okay, I press that the 12th fret, right behind the fret, the harmonic is 134.7, the frequency should be about 131, 132 hertz, and we're seeing a harmonic frequency here of 132.59. So it's within 2 Hertz. And so is it acceptable? It is. However, it's still a little bit high. And what that means is that the string length from the 12th fret to the bridge saddle is shorter than the distance of the nut to the 12th fret. So what I would have to do is loosen the string first detune the guitar and that string, use a number one Phillips screwdriver and tighten the saddle to make the distance longer. So bring the saddle back into the bridge to make the distance longer between the 12th fret and the saddle itself. And then you can get it to be a little bit closer than where it is now. Now how much do you turn that screw? Typically, you go about a half a turn each time. Now, this is an iterative process, which means that in some cases, it's going to take more than just one little quick setup. There is times, and this is the reason why you do that, is that you preset the screws, and you want to make sure that 
the values that you preset, the 25 and a half inches to the high E and then the 30 second back, that all plays a part in this setup process. And so taking your time and doing this, and what I'm doing is I'm bringing it back up to a 70 hertz, and we're going to double the 70 hertz this time. So we're at about 70.4, 70.5, should be about 141. Let's see where we're at. We're at 142.5, which means that I'm still a little sharp. Okay, should be about 141. Open tune, about 70. So it's still a little sharp, which means that that saddle, again, needs to go back a little bit farther. And so I keep doing this process until I get it within 1 to 2 hertz. So as I mentioned, this saddle is acceptable where it is now. However, if you want to get perfection, you can get it within a hertz. And that's gigantic. Um, now the human here, the human ear, uh, isn't going to be able to discern 2 hertz very easily. So again, I'm going to tune it to about 70. And the other thing when you tune it, I'm going to go up to 71. And the only reason is that you don't want to tune down. So I don't want to take it from 71 and then detune it and try to get it exactly at 70. I'm actually going to detune it below it and then bring it back up. You always want to tune up to the value that you're targeting. So I'm right around 70.4 again. 142, we're within 2 hertz, we're, we're within about a hertz, a little bit over a hertz, so we're very, very close uh, with that particular setting. So, start with the low E string, work through the other strings, there's a good chance that if you preset your bridge that one of the strings or more may be exact and you won't have to change the saddle position. But again, remember that if the frequency is higher in the harmonic, that means you need to lengthen the distance between the 12th fret and the saddle, which means that the saddle needs to go back into the bridge. Have a great day.